The Mets are looking for the key that unlocks a trip into contention in the wild card race. The Braves have the top honors right now, but a couple of key Braves won't make it, at least for the opening game of this series. No Brian McCann, no Chipper Jones, as the Mets and Braves get together for a weekend series at City Field. At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the Atlanta Braves. Mets baseball is presented in HD by IOTV. Get the best in HD free with IOTV. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. I'm Gary Cohen. Ron Darling and Keith Hernandez join me in just a moment as the Mets open a three-game weekend series against the Atlanta Braves. The Braves lead the wild card race in the National League. The Mets are eight games behind. No team has ever come from eight games down in August to win the wild card, but the Mets at least have themselves a chance. Nine games remaining against the Braves, including the three this weekend. R.A. Dickey, John Neese, and Dylan G. will get the starts for the Mets. The Mets have won five of nine from Atlanta so far this year. So I guess the question is, how realistic is a Mets wild card run, and what do they have to do this weekend? Well, you know, it was interesting today when we were listening to Terry Collins speak. He said, yes, we're running out of games. We're running out of time. But I think the thing you have to look at is that they have nine more games with the Braves. So if they have this great record against them, they play them in the middle of September, maybe go 7-2, and two, that really makes their chances much better. But right now, mathematically, if you think of 90 wins as the place you have to be to be in the wild card race, that's a 35-17 and 17 finish, definitely doable. So the Mets will try and start that tonight against an Atlanta team that looks awfully different from the last time the Mets saw them in the middle of the in, in the middle of June. No Brian McCann. He's out with an oblique on the DL. No Chipper Jones, although he's expected to play tomorrow. But a little more speed now in that Atlanta lineup. Well, Atlanta was a team that didn't steal bases, relied on a lot of power. Well, they picked up at the trading deadline Michael Bourne, the center fielder from the Houston Astros, in exchange for Jordan Schaefer, their young outfielder. And then injuries to Nate McClough that forced them, their other center fielder, forced them to call up Jose Constanza, not to be confused with George. And he's another speedster. Uh, Bourne brings 41 National League leading stolen bases uh, to this ball club in a leadoff role. Interesting lineup tonight. Pitcher Hudson hitting eighth, pulling a Tony La Russa here. Constanza hitting ninth, getting the two speedsters, I guess 9-1 for the lineup. Ugla's been raging hot. He's picked up the slack. He's on a 25, a career-high 25-game hitting streak and 11 home runs during that time. The Braves keep winning, though. You know, they're, the month of July, they're 16-11. They're a tough ball club. Mets need to win. Now, the Mets got rained out on Wednesday night. Dylan G was scheduled to pitch that game, but he's been pushed back to Sunday because Terry Collins loves to have Ari Dickey start a series. Well, you want Ari Dickey to start a series two reasons. One, he's one of your best pitchers, and also, even more importantly, he starts out with that knuckleball, and you think that it might put the opposing players into a slump throughout the rest of the series. And he's going to be going up against Tim Hudson, one of the best pitchers, uh, 13 uh, wins against the Mets in his career. Even more importantly, do not give him the lead. Give him a lead of three or more. He's 140 and two in his career. However, the Mets have beaten Hudson twice already this year. They'll go for three tonight. It's Fiesta Latina at City Field. Mets wearing brand new uniforms and hoping to take down the Braves.
play Powerball from the New York Lottery. Hey, you never know. By Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. By Parts Authority, the only name in auto parts you'll ever need to know. Visit them at PartsAuthority.com and become a VIP member today. By the $1.5 million Hamiltonian, Saturday, August 6th. Gates open 9.30 a.m. First race at 11.30 a.m. And by Cholula Hot Sauce, want the perfect balance of flavor and heat. Add Cholula Hot Sauce to your next meal. Just look for the iconic wooden cap. Follow the Mets with the MLB.com at Bat 11 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Blackberry. Check in using at Bat at Center at the City Field to receive special offers. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit Mets.com for details. R.A. Dickey will christen the Los Mets uniforms tonight. Mets going with big flu as they take on the Braves' first pitch coming up. Brought to you by Ford. No Chipper Jones. He expects to play tomorrow with a quad problem. No Brian McCann. He's on the disabled list with an oblique. Dan Ugler riding a 25 game hitting streak. He was hitting just 173 when the streak began. He's all the way up to 215. Freddie Freeman, no slouch, has an 18 game hitting streak. And R.A. Dickey will start against the Braves for the third time this year. Well, you see his Verizon numbers for the season. Uh, R.A. Dickey, since the middle of May, his ERA has been around three. Um, and the last game, his last start against Washington, the Mets was shut out. Made one mistake, Jason Ward, three run home run in the first. And we'll look at the Mets, the Mets Lexus defense and seven errors in the last 51 games. Mr. Wright, well, okay, he hasn't been back 51 games. Uh, David's most of his errors have been throwing errors. We mentioned that on that last road trip in Florida. 52% of his errors have been throwing. And there is a man just off the DL, Mr. Chipper Jones, not playing tonight. Michael Bourne, the newest Brave, leads off his fourth game with Atlanta. First pitch of the night by Dickey. It's a fastball popped up into shallow center. And Angel Pagan there to play it. And one pitch from Dickey, one fastball, one out. That's a case, right, Keith? A hitter coming up and saying, if Dickey throws me a first pitch fastball, I'm swinging at him. And he did it. It cost him an out. Well, he got it, he got it inside, Ron, and he was probably looking for a sinker away. 
and he got it in enough to get on his hands. Now Martin Prado who came back in the middle of July after missing more than a month with a staph infection in his calf and he's had trouble getting it back going since then getting a 272 on the year. Prado playing third base in the absence of Chipper Jones and he tucks the knuckle ball for a strike. Well, very compact, high leg kick for a knuckleball pitcher. Not too much push off, of course, which you'll always see with a knuckleballer. Good downward break on that one. That's 0-2 to Prado. You watch Ray throw; it's almost like watching someone throw darts. Prado's never had a hit against Dickey. One of two prominent hitters in the lineup who have not. Dan Ugla, the other one, and it's hit right at the second baseman Turner. So two quick outs for Dickey. Prado retired. Two out and nobody on. Well, this Brave team has had so many injuries. Prado right there, one of them. He's back in the lineup now. Was sorely missed for a while. The guys like Freddie Freeman right here really had a terrific year. He picked up the slack. Jason Hayward has not been having a good year. He's had an injury plague season, and they continue to win here. Well, they've won an enormous number of close games. They are 32 and 26 in games decided by one or two runs. Freddie Freeman just named National League Rookie of the Month for July, and he takes a strike. Freeman hit 362 with six home runs in July. Has not been hitting for as much power as the Braves thought he might. And the slow knuckler in for a strike, and it's 0 and 2. Well, they're going to have to be pre uh, patient with uh, Freddie. Freddie, I like him. I like the fact that he goes the other way, even though the Mets are really playing with a big shift. Double um, batting cleanup on deck, and Freeman yanks one down to first. Easy play for Murphy, and a 1 2 3 inning for Dickey through seven pitches, seven strikes to get three outs. No score as we go to the bottom of the first. Jose Reyes still leading the National League in batting. Daniel Murphy is not too far behind. Jason Bay has been hot lately and he's got good career numbers against Tim Hudson, who faces the Mets for the third time this year. The Mets have already beaten him twice. And Reyes goes after the first pitch, hits it toward the left field line, overcomes the speedy Constanza, and he makes a terrific play. Well, we talked about the speed of these two new guys, Bourne and Constanza, from an offensive standpoint. But also from a defensive standpoint, look at this. That tells you right there, able to cover ground. That had, I could have had triples written right all, all over it. Let's say Constanza is not a kid. He's 28 years old. And spent a long time in the Indians minor league system before the Braves got him as a minor league free agent. There's Tim Hudson's numbers. Talked about it, Gary. 0 2 with a 7 8 8 ERA this season with 13 wins against the Mets' career. Here's Justin Turner, and he takes a strike. 
Turner at 272 for the year. Mets have beaten the Braves five of nine this year, and they've had particular success against Hudson and Jair Jurgens. Over toward the right field line, and over comes Hayward, and he makes the grab two out. So two quick outs for Hudson. And nobody's throwing a ball in this game yet. Coors Light, Bravo defense, and what does Bourne bring to this club? Well, he brings a two-time Gold Glove winner out in center field, and you can't. Can't beat that. Johan Santana in the ballpark. Santana diagnosed yesterday with a fatigued left shoulder, so he's going to stay away from throwing, at least for the time being, for the remainder of this homestand. He'll hang out here in New York. Ball one to Daniel Murphy, who comes into the night fourth in the National League in batting. Getting a 319, had his nine game hitting streak stopped the last time the Mets played on Tuesday night. And he whacks one toward the hole of base hit. Well, the Mets have the first base runner of the night, Murphy, a two out single. Well, my feeling is play to pitch Daniel away and play him away. Now they pitch him away. He's up with his fastball here. Nice swing on it by Daniel. But they, Gonzalez, the shortstop, playing Daniel as if it was almost a full hitter. Well, not too much Daniel does wrong uh, in that batter's box. Another line drive. So David Wright comes up with a runner aboard and two out. David, after the great road trip, still looking for his first hit of this homestand. Has two career home runs against Hudson, but just 12 for 54 against him. That's a 222 average. Start to build up more than 50 at bats against a given pitcher. You know you're getting pretty deep into your career. Yes. Wait till you get to 100. Does anybody get to 100 anymore? Then you're old. <laughs> So is the pitcher. Here's a close light freeze cam. Beautiful swing right there. Right on the ball. Not trying to do anything with it. Hit it where it's pitched. That's what Daniel does best. One and one to right. And David fouls it off. He's got 100 at bats, Keith, against three different pitchers. Carlton, well, Depper. Oh wow, that's the other division. How about that? Kruko. And that's great. Three pretty tough pitchers. He probably did better against Kruko than the Mets did. <laughs> uh, I don't remember right against Kruko. He was tough. He had that slow hook. 289. I'll take it. <laughs> Hudson ahead on right one and two. David takes it inside. Dave, what do I hit up Carlton? Come on, break it out. Show the folks. 321. Thank you. Thank you. You knew that, right? Of course. I have the most at bats off the pitcher, the, the Carlton. Carlton's number one. Faced him the most. And he hit 330 off Nepper. And that is to me, I don't know how I did that. And that probably doesn't count the postseason. And then I talked to Mike Piazza, and Mike Piazza said Nepper was a piece of cake for him. I said, well. I wish I was a right hand hitter too. <laughs> Hudson with a 2 2. Murphy runs and David fouls it off. I was going to say, uh, Murphy had a huge lead at first base. Uh, very unusual that the talented and veteran Hudson did not see that. Look at that lead. Hudson's been a pretty easy to run on this year. 36 years old now. He's given up 13 stolen bases this year in 17 tries. Of course, the Braves have their backup catcher, David Ross, behind the plate these days with Brian McCann on the disabled list. Hudson's been in an incredible groove since the last time the Mets saw him. They beat him twice in a 10 day span in. The first half of June. Since then, he's made eight starts and he's five and one with a 2.11 ERA. So he has kicked it back in gear, pitched a brilliant game to beat Florida his last time out. Allowed just one run, no walks in seven innings. We talked to the uh, coaching staff for the Atlanta Braves. They said that Hudson's rejuvenation has coincided with David Ross catching. Very close at first base. If I was Murph, I'd go in uh, on my belly. 
Strong runner stumbled. Big lead. Hudson's a little up right now. The other thing, Ronnie, is that they've needed Hudson to kick it in because Lowe has struggled right. and Jurgens lately has struggled. Well, Jurgens had to not fall out of that tree. That's not a very good thing. But Jurgens was so good, Gary. I mean, almost perfect every time he went out there. Hansen's been up and down this season. He's had some amazing games. Had a 14 strikeout game in seven innings earlier this year. That's will face Hansen tomorrow night. Two and two to David Wright. And the breaking ball hit in the air deep to left center field. Back goes Bourne to the track near the wall and it's off the fence. Murphy around third. He'll race home to score. David Wright with an RBI double and the Mets take an early 1 0 lead. Well, Wright's first hit of the homestand that drives in the first run of the night. Hanging slider right here. He's been up, as I said, it's a belt high slider that stayed flat. And most parks, that's a two run shot. And Murphy running on the break. He's going to score easily here. Good at bat by David. I always like the fact that since he's come back, he's stayed in on the breaking ball from the right hander. 12th double, 30 second run batted in for Wright. So the Mets had two out and nobody on. Murphy with a two out single, and Wright chases him home with a double off the wall. Now Angel Pagan, who bounces one foul. Well, your IOTV pitch differential. You know, that's all it takes, folks. Look what the bat is right there. If he gets it out there, that's the difference getting at the end of the bat as opposed to on the fat of it. Pagan has terrific career numbers against Hudson, nine for 18 with a home run. And Angel takes the off-speed pitch, one and one. There are the overall numbers for Pagan. He's had an up-and-down season after his breakout year last year. Look kind of nice. Oh, I like the, I like I like the colors. I do. Nice bright blue. Well, on, the, on the color wheel, orange and blue are contrasting colors. They Naran. stand out much, uh, uh, amongst each other. They stand out. Narancia y Azul. Yes, there you go. The Los Very good. Yeah. I've been practicing. Jeez. <laughs> of course, we wear the, uh, the Azul every night. Long inside. That's two and two to Pagan. There are his numbers against Hudson. That's got five runs and four innings against Hudson on the 5th of June and beat him 5 4. They got three runs and four innings against him 10 days later and beat him 4 0. Just three pitches for Hudson to get the first two hitters out, but Murphy took him the other way for a hit. Wright worked him for a seven pitch at bat and took him to left center for a double. Now it's two and two to Pagan. And his feet hits three and two. Well, to me, this is the setup pitch by Hudson. He wanted to throw that on the black for the strikeout, but he wasn't going to miss over the plate. He was going to miss in, which he did. Which will set the sinker or change up away. And on three and two, Angel wax one foul. He is up, Ronnie. Yeah, big time. He's, he's really that was a big mistake pitch he, there. He is. He is searching for it. This is how he looked the last time he yes. faced the match. Very good comment, Gary. Very perceptive. Are absolutely correct. And we said at that time, and this is almost two months ago now, that it looked like his back was bothering him, which was an issue earlier in the year. Again, the 3 2 to Pagan, and he struck him out with the slider. So Hudson takes care of Pagan to end the inning, but the Mets get off to a fast start. All right, Dickey has.
purchase of a regularly priced ticket kids 12 and under will get free admission to Mets games through Sunday August 7th get to Mets.com slash kids free for tickets and details. Dan Ugla leads off against R.A. Dickey and this is where the. Uh, couple of streaks in Ugla's resume go head to head. He's got a 25 game hitting streak going but he's never had a hit against R.A. Dickey. He's 0 for 15 against him. Now it is unprecedented for a player who was struggling as badly as Ugla to have a 25 game hitting streak. I mean he was hitting at 173 when the streak began. And he's a 215 now and the 215 is by far by far the lowest batting average of any player at a time when he's had a 25 game hitting streak in Major League history. In fact it's 50 points lower than any players ever had. Imagine that. No it makes total sense though when a guy good only good hitters usually can go on 25 game hitting streaks. So when they do that's when they push their average way up well over 300. It's been the opposite for Ugla. Wow. The previous low that any player had at the point where he had a 25 game hitting streak was 265 and that was by a guy named Hobie Ferris with the St. Louis Browns in 1908. Right down to Murphy who goes down to a need to play it and Ugla out to start the second inning. But you know we saw Ugla a lot early in the season and he just he was all messed up and it's amazing the turnaround that he's put together. All messed up and there were talk to some people from Atlanta today. They said he is hitting everything. It doesn't matter where the ball is and hitting it with power. He just can't hit Dickie's knuckleball. That's right. Again. It makes you wonder you know Carl Crawford off to a slow start earlier in the year with Boston new contract. New new fan base pressure, you know, coming into a new area and you get off to a bad start. I think that can all snowball on you. Here's Jason Hayward has just had a very difficult sophomore season, had a shoulder injury earlier this year, has never been able to hit his stride since coming back. He's hitting just 223 with 11 home runs. David Ross on deck. By the way, speaking of Ugla and new teams, the guy Ugla was traded for, Omar Infante, broke a finger last night and he went on the disabled list today. Broke the middle finger on his right hand diving for a ball. How about this one? New team's a big contract. How about our friend Mr. Adam Dunn? Mm. How about that season he's having? That's about as bad a year as anybody's ever had. Mm. And that just missed two and two to Hayward. Dickey thought he had a strike here. Yeah, Brian Gorman so far the home plate umpires had a strict tight strike zone. And that's on the outside corner so he got that call. And Dickey has his first strikeout. Knuckle ball almost the back door. See how it takes a little left turn there. A nice job by Josh to frame it on the outside corner. Just tumbles enough come around on that outside corner. So five up and five down for Dickey to start the night. And now two out and nobody on for David Ross. Ross making his 30th start of the year. Filling in while Brian McCann is on the disabled list. And you got to be careful with Ross. He's got some power. A big guy. He can hit the ball in the ballpark. Here's Brian Gorman, the crew chief and home plate umpire tonight. Second generation big league umpire. Well, how about this measure of Ross's effectiveness? When he has started this year, the Braves are 20 and 9. It's kind of backup catcher you want, don't you? And the fastball misses, and all of a sudden, Dickey behind on Ross 3 0. There's your umpire crew for tonight. Gorman has the plate. Dan Bellino, a rookie umpire, with Randazzo and Vanover rounding out the crew. Dickey coming off his start in Washington Saturday night when he matched up against Unieski Maya. Gave up a three run homer to Jason Worth in the first inning, and that was all the scoring on the night. And it turned out to be a 3 0 loss for Dickey. Alex Gonzalez would be next. In relation to Freddie. 
Swing and a miss, and Dickey comes back from 3 0 to strike out Ross, and the inning is over. Second strikeout for RA. Mets got a run in the first inning, and now Lucas Tudor will be coming up for a turn at bat in the bottom of the second, looking to help the Mets to more. Tonight, who's the only pitcher in Major League history with 75 wins for three mm. different teams? And we bring that up because Tim Hudson has 75 or more for two different teams as Jason Bay drives one to center field, but Bourne is there. So Jason has been swinging the bat much better lately. Hit that ball solidly for the first down. One pitch and one out of the second. And Lucas Tudor will be coming in. Hudson won 92 games for Oakland and he's won 83 for Atlanta. And in fact, he's the only active pitcher with 75 or more for two different teams. So I'll tell you that the guy with three is not active. Santana does not have 75 wins as a bet. We just showed him. No. I'm thinking Although that they'd like him to get there in the next couple of years. Lucas Duda takes a strike. The names that come to mind straight away for me are guys like Blylevin, who pitched for a couple of teams. I was going to say Nolan, but no way he got 75 here. No, not here. Then. No. no. A flare to left field, and right there is Constanza, and that's the second out. How many years did Ryan play? Well, he came up here in '65, maybe for really? the first time, but you know, up and down. He was up and down a lot. Here through 71. He also had service responsibilities, yeah. also, right? A lot of guys did. I mean, people don't remember this now, but players used to go away for two weeks for, for summer military camp. Guys were in the uh, the Army Reserve. It was a uh, concern because there was a draft back in, I was the last year of the draft, and uh, I had a number so high, there was no way I was going to get drafted, but if you did get drafted guys other guys you played with that were gone they just were gone for six weeks to the to the uh, National Guard for, for duty one and one to Tolly who's hitting at 254 on the year well, I don't say that in a negative way I mean it just it just interrupted their careers yeah. those guys yeah. cut their season right in the middle Toward the middle of the diamond overcomes Gonzalez to grab it and the side retired easy inning for Tim Hudson gets the Mets one two three on just seven pitches after two one nothing Mets.
I'm three credit scores one place. You know a lot of people sit in traffic on a Friday night heading out to the Hamptons down to the shore. Some folks find a better way. Nice. You know what I tried to negotiate that with SNY they would have said no dice. They wouldn't give you the helicopter. They would not give me the helicopter. Right, I said only one 10 game homestand just one game. Alex Gonzalez leads off for the third inning and takes the strike. You could leave at six o'clock from the sack to get here for a night game. Right. <laughs> I believe he's tried that. <laughs> and he did not go around. Dan Molina with the call, one and one to Gonzalez. He's hitting just 232 this year, and his on base percentage just 262, as unsightly as they come. But he's got some pop. Can't reach that with a pull, and it's one and two. Only well, went chasing, didn't he? Boy, enough the ball can make it look silly, can it? Well, and again, I get back to what we were talking about earlier that Terry Collins likes to have Dickey at the front of a series because he thinks that it messes up the opposition for the three games. Keith, do you put any validity into that? I don't. I think that uh, as a hitter, where I face Negro and uh, both Negroes, and you know, when they're gone, they're gone. On to the next, back to conventional. That doesn't throw you off. I didn't feel that way. I think what it does sometimes, though, it could happen in St. Louis. Occasionally, some of their better players will sit because they don't like the hit against the knuckleball. So then, with Pujols, punched in the air down the right side. That'll go out of play. Now, the uh, the Atlanta manager, Freddie Gonzalez, for the third time this week, has got his pitcher hitting eight. And he's done this since. He's had these two speedy outfielders in his lineup with Warren hitting lead off. He's had Constanza batting ninth because he likes to have those two back to back. So he's got Hudson, who's not a bad hitter in his own right, batting eight. Taking a page out of the Tony La Russa playbook. Well, by La Russa's explanation, then, Freddie trying to get Freddie Freeman uh, some more opportunities with people on base, right? Him, him. Freeman being the third place hitter. Now, Freddie noted that you know, John Russell, when he was managing in Pittsburgh, tried this and he lost his job. But he said, Tony's still there, so I guess it's okay. <laughs> Gonzalez pulls one through the hole, and the Braves have their first hit of the night. So there is no magic. And that low Smith's uniform. Oh, they're yet another no hit down the tubes. <laughs> so that works out well for Hudson. He can go up there to bunt with Constanza hitting ninth on deck. Hudson has six hits and six sacrifices this year, and Wright comes in looking for the bunt. Well, Turner really cheating at second base. Murph and Wright, of course, very aggressive on the corners. And Hudson, uh, as we've stated many times, uh, can swing the bat. He hit a two run homer earlier this year, which was the only scoring in a 2 0 Braves win. He pitched a shutout and hit a home run for all the runs in the game. Doesn't happen very often. You know, or, or, or Walt Terrell. But Wise, well, was Wise better, pitched a no hitter and hit two home runs oh, in the same sorry. game. I don't know how a pitcher does better than that. <laughs> but you know, as a Met fan, we we have great love of Walt Terrell's part since he's the only Met pitcher to hit two home runs in a game. Well, crazy crap! He had the two two run home runs in Chicago. Pitch a shutout, one four nothing. And you know what's funny? Uh, we were still in the minor leagues and played with uh, Walt in Triple A. And uh, because of the DH, we didn't even know he could hit. So when we found out he had hit two home, two two run home runs, we're like, wow. And Hudson fouls off the bunt attempt. He is a strikeout victim. Third strikeout for Dickey, and that's the first out of the inning. Well, the problem is, is against this knuckleball, it makes it about as tough as you can make it. But you see where the bat is; it's almost behind the plate. Really got to get that out in front so you have a chance to keep it fair, but very difficult to bunt that knuckleball. So now Jose Constanza, we saw him a little bit in spring training. 
just called up by the Braves a week ago. His major league debut came last Friday. 28 years old. He spent half a dozen years in the Indians farm system before the Braves got him as a minor league free agent, native of the Dominican Republic. And uh, it'll be interesting to find out whether Jose Constanza has any relatives named Jorge. <laughs> They're, you know, Seinfeld fans. <laughs> Dickey behind 2 0. Oh. Gonzalez not a base stealer. And the fastball pulled into right center, base hit, and that's going to go all the way back to the wall. A long way to get it for Duda. Gonzalez around third he's heading home Constanza will make it to third easily and then he'll be stopped there by Brian Snicker the Braves have tied the game on an RBI triple for Jose Constanza his first major league triple. Well I'll tell you what if they don't execute the relay here a Duda through a short hop to Turner if Turner muffs this ball or can't make the play Constanza was running so hard out of the box. Watch this. That he could have, he could have had an inside the park home run or a triple and score on an error. Look at him fly. Oh my word. That's Reyes like by the way. Jealous. Go ahead run at third infield in and Michael Bourne fouls it off and certainly the squeeze possibility is wide open here with a guy like Bourne who can bunt and can stands at third. Keith you're surprised the infield in here in the third. Third I, inning. I think it's a game of such importance, Ron, with yep. Hudson out there. You know, they're going to try to chop it off. I do think if runners were on second and third, they'd play back. And from Dickey's perspective, you know, he fell behind Constanza 2 0, came in with a fastball. He's never seen before, figured he'd challenge him, and Constanza did a nice job with it. So the Braves have gotten a boost from Constanza with so many injuries to their outfielders. Stays alive. I mean, they had McClouth and Schaefer go down with a couple of days of each other, and then they traded Schaefer to get Warren. Warren fly to center his first time up. Hits this one out to left. That should get Constanza home easily as Bay makes the catch. And Constanza trots in with the go ahead run. It's two to one Atlanta. Pretty good at bat right there for Bourne. Getting behind 0 and 2. You just got to protect the plate and bear down. And he went the other way. A fly ball is all you need. And this is a knuckle ball that is away, and he goes right with it. So those uh, two speedsters hitting nine and one, paying off for Freddie Gonzalez. Now Martin Prado with two out and nobody on, and he takes the knuckler up and away. Prado grounded out to second base his first trip. Entertain. He has not yet begun to swing a bat, and the Braves are not at all sure when McCann's going to be back. Well, they were talking with the manager Davey Johnson and, and talking with the Washington Nationals because Pudge Rodriguez had the same injury, the oblique. And it's always unique when it's with a catcher how to get him back and play because it's so important with that kind of. Quick movements that they have to have to throw the ball to second base. In fact, he hurt the oblique not on a swing but on a throw. Now the good news for the Braves is they'll get Chipper Jones back tomorrow, but you know, who knows how long he can stay healthy. Little tapper back to Dickey, and he takes care of Prado to end the inning. But the Braves put together a couple of runs, keyed by the triple from Constanza, and it's two to one Atlanta in the third.
with 75 wins for three teams. Better known for the surgery name. Oh, Tommy John. Okay. Of course. All right, Dickey leads off against Tim Hudson, who now pitches with a two to one lead. Dickey has been hot with the bat lately. Six hits in his last 11 at bats. The only mid pitcher to get hot this year with the bat, other than Chris Young, who had three hits in one game and has been out since April. By the way, there's news today on Ike Davis. It's uh, it's not good news by any means. In that, there's Ike. It's pretty certain now that Ike is done for the year. He's been doing some running the last few weeks. Gonzalez comes in on Dickey's grounder. And Freeman stretches to get it one away. And they examined the bruise on Ike's knee and basically found that not a whole lot had changed. So the latest plan is for him to not do any running for the next four weeks. And then they'll reassess. Now, a few weeks ago, it looked as though if he wasn't ready by now, that they were going to opt for the surgical route. And Sandy Alderson and Ike. Both talking today made it sound as though they're trying to avoid surgery if they possibly can. Here's Reyes with one out. The doctors have told Ike that the bone bruise will heal on its own. The question is how long it's going to take. The problem is if you wait too long and it doesn't repair itself, yes. do you have enough time to recover from surgery if you need it and be ready for next year? To another Reyes who flat out to left. A nice play by Constanza his first time up. It's, those, those decisions are always tough ones. Yeah. Do, you, do, you pull, do you pull the trigger? And Ike's going to see another doctor in North Carolina, a guy he saw for a second opinion last time on Tuesday just to get confirmation that they're headed in the right direction. There is some cartilage damage in that ankle as well, but Ike says that's not the issue, that the bone bruise appears to be the issue. I was but, lucky. Uh, sorry, go Gary. I was just going to yeah. say, but it's it's amazing how what looked like such an innocuous injury yes. in the middle of May has turned into a season-ending injury. Three-one from Hudson, and Reyes takes one down the middle, three and two. I was just saying that I was lucky that other than the surgery I had to have in '87 at the end of the season, every single surgery I had, four total, were always in the off season. Here's what Sandy Alderson had to say about Mike Davis and his status earlier today. I think it would be very difficult for him to uh, come back and play this season. We're talking about four weeks from now. You're talking about the first week in September. Uh, he will not have participated in any sort of baseball activity between now and then. Um, I think it's very unlikely. Reyes drives one toward the gap in left center, but there's Costanza again to make the catch. Reyes robbed twice by the speed of Jose Constanza, who has certainly made his presence felt tonight in multiple ways here at City Field. Oh, Jose hit this ball good. A little too much air time. That's those speedsters. You have plenty of time to get under it. He almost came in too much. He had to readjust there. He kind of didn't think it was hit so deep. Going back to the last game the Mets played against Florida, that's three bullets in a row. Great plays by the fielders. So two out here is Justin Turner, and he takes a strike. One more note about Ike. He was talking about the possibility of having a microfracture surgery if it comes to that. He said there's no guarantee if he had that surgery that it would even work. That's what the doctors have said, and that's one of the reasons why they're going to try as hard as they can to keep him away from surgery and try and you know, use rehabilitation to get it ready for him to play next year. That's scary. When the doctors don't have any answers. Well, here's how Sandy Alderson put it. He said, "There's no true roadmap to recovery, so they're basically trying to figure it out as they go along." Turner pulls one down to third, and Prado makes the play. And that retires the side. Mets go down one, two, three. Hudson has set down seven straight. And the Braves take a 2 1 lead into the fourth.
Freddie Freeman leads off in the fourth inning against R.A. Dickey with the Braves up two to one. Freeman grounded out to first base his first trip. It'll be Freeman, then Dan Ugla and Jason Hayward, three, four, and five in the Atlanta batting order. Against Dickey, who had a one nothing lead, but gave up a key triple to Constanza, the number nine hitter, that cost him. Freeman hits it well out to center field, chasing Pagan back, and it's over his head, and it hops over the wall for a ground rule double. Well, this had a lot of air time here. This is not a line drive, it's a fly ball. Now, granted, he crushed it, and it short hops the wall right by the city sign. Gone just couldn't get to it. So Freeman has his 27th double of the year. And the Braves have their third hit off Dickey. And now here's Ugla, who grounded out his first time up. Started the night with a 25 game hitting streak, longest by a Brave in 15 years. And he takes a strike. What's amazing about Ugla's streak is that during the 25 game hitting streak he has 11 home runs which is more than anybody in the majors. Normally you don't get hitting streaks and lead the the majors yeah. and home runs at the same time. One and one to Ugla. Meanwhile Freeman now has a 19 game hitting streak with that double. Well I like this kid here he's going to be a good one. Freeman. He goes up the middle we just saw and he's going to when he learns to pull and he gets more experience. He's going to be quite a quite a player. Two and one to Ugla. Jason Hayward on deck. Ugla before the streak began had just 12 home runs this year in addition to his low average. He's got 11 home runs now during the streak. And Dickey falls behind three and one. I don't think Ugla's going to get a fastball here, but you've got to be. Don't let him sneak one by. Yeah. I'll tell you though, uh, it's been a funky year, hasn't it been for the cleanup spot? Ugla's hitting cleanup at 215. Adam Dunn hit cleanup against the Yankees last night at 165. Dickey got burned on a fastball by Constanza in the last inning. Throws the knuckleball here and it's fouled off. That was a vicious cut right there from Ugla. This knuckleball just stays right up on a tee here. Oh boy. He had a rip. But the runners in scoring position since June. Wow. Now it's three and two to Ugla. And he breaks his back. Right checks the runner, voids the sliver of bat, and throws out Ugla. There's a big out for Ari Dickey. Good pitch came inside and got him. Fastball. Fastball. How about that? He was not fooled by it. He was ready to hit. He located. Ball ran in on his hands. So Freeman still at second. That bat can head to the chipper. Yeah. Not Jones, but I mean like in Fargo. Yes. <laughs> there you go, Fargo. <laughs> it's Jason Hayward who took a call third strike his first time. And he takes the strike. Let's check in with Kevin Burkhardt. Kevin, you talked about the shoulder issues that Hayward dealt with this year. Was on the DL for a few weeks with it as well. But there's never any structural damage shown by the MRI. I asked him about it today. He said, "You know, spring training, one of the games I felt kind of a pop, and it was just a muscular tightness issue with him. As he's going to turn it with a backhand, try to get him, and he got him. Heck of a play by Justin Turner. Freeman goes to third, and there's two down. Well, look at that again, guys. Well, nice play." Kev by Turner, but it's not an easy pickup for Daniel. Very nicely done by Dan. Saves a run. That's that in between hop. Not an easy one. Just to finish the thought on Hayward. Anyway, you know, no structural damage. But what he had to do is deep tissue massage for a few days in a row. He said it was so painful initially because there was like a knot by his rotator cuff and ended up getting better, but it was so tight it affected his back and his one disc as well. He says he's not feeling it at all, but some have kind of wondered if that is indeed true, guys. And of course, if you'll remember when he was sitting out initially with that shoulder, it, uh, there was some major prodding from Chipper Jones to encourage him to. Try and play through the discomfort. 
I asked him if there's any maintenance that he's doing special for it. He said, you know, you know, during the games, nothing. I'm, I am getting deep tissue massage in that shoulder area, you know, about three times a week. That's not too uncommon. I mean, guys get massages, you know, a lot. But other than that, he's just trying to deal with it, guys. Freeman at third with two out. And Ross pulls one sharply, oh. and a great stop by David Wright. The do or die play, and he gets Ross to end the inning. Quick hands by David Wright on a bullet right near his feet. And that saves a run for R.A. Dickey in the Mets. Still 2 to 1 Atlanta. Brought to you by Brooklyn Burger. Join Keith Hernandez on Mets Plaza before tomorrow's Mets Braves game for the third annual Brooklyn Burger Eating Contest. Be there at 5.30 p.m. to check out the contest and you can have a chance to compete for a VIP game day experience at a Mets game later this season. Very excited about that. I think they should make you participate. Oh, I'm on the diet. Sorry. I can't wolf those things down. Too many of them. <laughs> Daniel Murphy leading off the home for it. And Murphy loops one into shallow right on comes Hayward and he slides to make the grab. The ball was fading fast and Hayward had to leave his feet one away. Well, you always worry of you know, that bad shoulder and you dive like that and you spread eagle that puts a lot of stress on the shoulders when you come down but nice play by Hayward. Home Depot doing more on defense. A couple of nice plays by Constanza in left and now Hayward. Makes a hit away from Murphy and Wright. And here's David Wright who drove in the Mets run with a double off the fence in left center in the first inning. Since that double, Hudson's retired nine in a row. And he misses high to right with Angel Pagan on deck. One yeah, good curveball by Hudson, one and one. David look a little more crouched to you. I know he was always upright from his waist up. I think he's more in a crouched position than I've seen him. Totally agree. Down a third for Prado. Two out. So Pagan will bat with two out and nobody on. Hudson is now set down nine in a row. Pagan struck out on a 3 2 pitch his first time up. Matt Holiday is just homeward for the Cardinals in Florida. Off Anibal Sanchez tied that game 1 1. Cardinals 
three games out of the Central and then five games out of the wild card. Well, they better win. They better win the the wild card. I don't think they're going to get come back and catch Milwaukee. Scary moment for St. Louis last night. They got their young third baseman yeah. David Freeze hitting the helmet by a Clay Hensley pitch. Well, had to leave that had, ball game. He's had nothing but bad luck, Freeze. The last couple of years, yeah. The ankle, um, shoulder, and now this. Two and out to Pagan, and he fouls it off. There are the standings in the central. Pirates and the Reds have been pretty bad the last couple of weeks or so, but the uh, you know, Brewers and Cardinals are going to play each other a lot, I think, down the stretch. Well, the Pirates were in it, and then they just got swept in a four game series by the Cubs at home. The Cubs had not swept a four game series in Pittsburgh since 1959. So that was just a killer blow for the Pirates' chances. They've now lost seven in a row. Yeah, and the Cubs are El Stinko. <laughs> Although they won their sixth in a row today. Beat well, the Reds four to three. And you were right, Gary. You said the Reds' pitching problems were the, were the, their Achilles' heel. And we saw it in Spades in that four-game sweep in Cincy by the Mets over them. Three-two from Hudson is too high. Ball four, and the Mets have their first walk of the night. And who walks very few as a string of nine in a row retired ended. And Jason Bay will come up with two out of the man on. Jason hit the ball well his first time up. Wide out the center field. Starting to hit the ball with a little more authority. Let's see if Pagan tries to swipe a base here. 20 steals for Angel and 24 tries. Slider off the plate to Bay. A lot of movement on that sink, huh, Ronnie? Boy, that was a key call, though, for. Tim Hudson there with Brian Gorman calling that a strike. The ball could have been called low. Look at that thing. A good catch there by David Ross framing that low pitch. Popped up, shallow right. In comes Hayward. Coming on. And he can't get it. And it bounces into the stands, which is going to cost the Mets a run. If it bounces behind him, it goes to the corner. Pagan scores easily. But it hopped into the crowd, and so Pagan will have to stop at third. A pop fly double for Jason Bay. Very fortunate. Boy, I tell you, I thought Hayward was going to try to dive for that. Must have got a bad jump with his kind of speed. I don't know how that ball is not caught. So now two are in scoring position for Lucas Duda with two out. Duda fly to left his first time up. Mets down by a run of the fourth. And he hit him. And Duda will go to first base and the bases are loaded. That's the ninth batter Hudson has hit this year. He's in the top five in the league in hit by pitch. So Duda's aboard. The bases are loaded for Tolan. Hudson's been struggling really with his control, even though he retired nine in a row. He has not thrown the ball where he wants to throw it, and it would behoove the Mets to jump on him here while he's struggling. You know, in a game that is of much greater import to the Mets than it is to the Braves, it's a big at bat for Josh Tolley. Bases loaded, two down. Tolley bounced out to short his first time up. Mets down by a run in the fourth. And the curveball bends in for a strike, nothing in one. Gone at third, Bay at second, Duda at first with two down. And 
Toley floats one foul and quickly Hudson's out in front nothing and two. Such a strange year at the plate for Josh Toley. He's had a hard time getting his bat head out on fastballs this year, which has been shocking to me. He's a line drive hitter. Yeah. And he's been tardy. He chokes, look at he chokes up a good two inches up there at the plate. Now he's got to be in protect mode on 0 and 2. And Hudson comes upstairs. Ball and two strikes. All right, Dickey would be next. One and two, totally pops it up. And the left fielder can stands are right there. Almost got away, but he makes the grab to end the inning. And the Mets strand three in the bottom of the fourth. On to the fifth, two to one Atlanta. At bat in the bottom of the fourth, wide out with the bases loaded to strand three. It's going to be so difficult as a catcher when you make that last out. Now you got to get the equipment on and suddenly shift your focus to helping your pitcher get through the next inning. You know, um, when I used to watch Gary Carter do it when I wasn't pitching, just sitting on the bench, he would have this big exhale and be sitting there just almost like he had been wounded because he had not gotten the hit. But as soon as he got his stuff on, he would sprint to the plate. And I think that was his way of maybe washing away that at bat and getting back to calling the pitches. Well, that's the big burden on catching is that you really. There's Bud. Excuse me, Bud Harrelson. We love Bud. One of my favorite people. Yes. One of the best batting cat pat practice pitchers there was, too. One of the best third base coaches. Uh, Joe Pignatano's here. We got the crew. Former Mets bullpen coach. But he could also pick it a little bit, couldn't he, Gary? But he was one of the best <laughs> defensive shortstops you've ever seen. Good, great bunner. Did all the little things. Got the runners over. Uh, just a good guy. Winning player. Held his own at 145 pounds. <laughs> that was at the beginning of the season. Maybe 135 <laughs> at the end. But was a little goofy too. He was a little quirky. He had a little quirky he, personality. You got to be quirky to yeah, make the course. last in this well, game. Well, he also he was Seaver's roommate, so <laughs> he had to have a sense of humor. 3-1 to Gonzalez and he pops it up. David Wright comes in to call. One away. Well there's Bud. Number three. He went on to the Phillies. And had some good years with the Phils. Well, he's got. One of the few Mets who has two World Series rings as a match. That's right. As a player in 69 and as a coach in 86. Bud from Hayward, California, I believe, went to That's San Francisco right. State. That's right. 
East Bay Town Hayward. Tim Hudson struck out trying to bunt his first time up. You know, just to finish my thought on Carter, you know, just catchers in general, they have to be the most selfless of all all the 25 of the men on the roster. They have to separate their offense from their defense. You, you, there's just no, you can't, you got to call a game. It's just too critical. Another play for right. Hudson not running quickly. Ronnie, tell me about how a pitcher does that. In other words, Hudson's not always going to jog slowly down to first base. Yeah. How as a pitcher do you decide? And pick and choose your spot. I used to always because I was. Uh, it's interesting you asked that, Gary. I was always afraid that if you went at it halfway, you had more chance to injure, injure yourself than running. You know, I'm not talking about 100 percent, but just uh, you know, a nice uh, a three quarter kind of sprint down that first base line. But Hudson has been pitching for many years, knows how to take care of himself, how to be ready, all those things. But personally, for me. I would always at least three quarter run down the first baseline. Do you think it's a time of year thing? In other words, are you more likely to run it out hard in May than you would in the middle of August? I used to try to. I was angry if I made an out, and I made tons of outs. So you'd wash away that anger by sprinting down to first base. Dickie Getzkin stands on the ground ball. We're halfway through at City Field with the Braves up two to one. All right, Dickey leads off the home fifth inning. Dickey bounced out to short his first time up. Oh, nice. Hudson throws a fastball by him, nothing and one. Hudson coming back to the mound after getting out of a bases loaded jam in the fourth to face Dickey, Reyes, and Turner in the bottom of the fifth. Just tonight, you don't know, but Hudson has lost a couple of miles per hour even on the breaking balls, fastball. Slow ground ball, and in comes Prado to play it. Dickey running full speed. One away. Well, here's Reyes, who's been up twice and has been introduced to Jose Constanza in left field. Well, the first of that first pitch of the game, robbed by Constanza. And then his second at bat. There he is. Maybe it has something to do with that number. Number 17. You mean Dayson Ku's number? <laughs> Corners in against Reyes with one out and nobody on. He fouls one at the plate. And 
the Mets are done with this series with the Braves. The San Diego Padres come in for four games. And Keith's favorite Padre, Chase Headley, just did a grand slam in Pittsburgh. Headley? Headley. <laughs> Headley. They don't get many grand slams over there in San Diego. No, they've got nine runs tonight, which will tell you how bad the Pirates are going. Doing that against Jeff Carstens, who's had a miracle season so far for the Pirates. But they're in danger of losing their eighth in a row now. Slap to third. Prado comes in to get it. Two out. Well, Reyes figured he'd try somebody other than Stanza. That didn't work. Now two out of the inning for Justin Turner. That's got their only run back in the first inning. A two out single by Murphy. An RBI double by Wright. In fact Hudson has retired the first two in every inning. Reyes got their two runs in the third with Constanza's triple right in the middle of that rally. Turner tonight 0 for 2. Fly to right, bounce to third. He's two for his last 19. And he takes it at the knees for a strike. Hudson's, Hudson's starting to find his way. Everything's down. Tons of movement. Another ground ball. This one for Ugla. And he throws out Turner. An easy inning for Hudson. Three ground ball outs. He threw just seven pitches. After five, two to one Atlanta. Tonight's Mets and Yankees game to the latest from Jets and Giants camp. Get all the insider info and heated debate on the top New York sports stories from Daily News Live, Wheelhouse, and Loudmouths, all part of the New York Sports Local. Weekdays starting at 5 only on SNY. Top of the batting order, Michael Bourne leads off against R.A. Dickey in the sixth. Bourne drove in a run with the sacrifice fly in the third. That gave the Braves the lead, and they've held it ever since. Bourne playing his fourth game for Atlanta since coming over for Houston with four players going in the other direction. The Astros got Jordan Schaefer, who's currently on the disabled list with a finger injury, and three pitchers, three minor league pitchers, but none of the Braves' top pitching prospects. And the slow knuckler gets him. Ari Dickey ratcheting it down to 65 for his fourth strikeout of the night. Well, it's a good man to do it against. Lots of movement on that knuckleball. One out and nobody on. Martin Prado coming up. Let's check in with Kevin. Well, guys, clearly Josh Toley is still learning to get better as a catcher. I mean, he hasn't been doing this for too long. Remember that. And, you know, there's been a lot of things that he's been working on to try and improve. First of all, his throwing has clearly been better the last couple of weeks. And I asked him about it. And he said, you know, it's a weird thing. 
It was with R.A. Dickey pitching. He actually bounced one. And with the runner going, he couldn't remember the game, and I didn't frankly remember it either. But he said it was a short hop. I picked it up, and I had nothing but a reaction. And I threw it down to second base, maybe, maybe my best throw of the year. Got the runner stealing, and all of a sudden I was like, "Wow, where's, where's that release been all year?" And it just felt so good. And since that point, I've been in that type of groove. That one Reyes gets to, but has no shot at Prado. So that's the throwing part. He feels like he's been in a better groove since that time. Now, as far as blocking balls, Terry Collins told me that. Uh, the Mets have moved him just a little bit closer to the plate. Felt he was a little bit too far away, so moved him closer, trying to get him better at blocking balls, get him a closer angle there. John Debus, who is a catcher himself, he's also the catching instructor here, said, you know, it's just all the constant reminders of the little things with Josh. He's not a pure catcher yet, so it's all the little things that I remind him of every single day. He said, as far as working with the staff, the good thing is his personality, really, guys really like him and respect him. But just all those small things Josh continues to work on. Guys? Freddie Freeman hits one toward the left field corner. They won't get there, and it's up against the wall. Prado goes to third. He'll be held up there, and Freeman has his second double of the night. Well, Freddie Freeman's been wrecking the National League for the last month and a half. National League Rookie of the Month in July and having a big night against Dickey tonight. Well, this is why I like this young man. I said it earlier. He goes the other way. And as he gets more experience, he stays healthy, he will learn to pull. It's always better to be young and be able to hit the ball naturally the other way and then you learn to pull. This kid's got a big future in front of him. So now you got Ugla coming up. You got first base open. Ugla has never had a hit against Dickey. He's 0 for 17 but he's been red hot against everybody else. How do you play this? Well he strikes out a lot too. Always strikes out. So they're going to pitch to him and I have no qualms with this. That's bringing the infield most of the way in but not all the way in. And Ugla takes a hack at the knuckler, nothing at one. Ronnie, what do you think? Well, Pr yeah, I like it too. But uh, Pr Prado's got good speed, not great speed. That's why he can play a couple steps back. Boy, wicked knuckleball there. He's going to need two more of them. Ugla 0 for 2 tonight. Grounded to first and broke his bat and grounded out to third. And now Dickey's. That was a pitch for him to hit. He was on it. He's just been under it a little bit. See now as a hitter Gary with a knuckleball pitcher you can't look comfortable. You've got to look fastball too so and then adjust the knuckleball because he might sneak one by you. Nicky needing a strikeout ahead 0 and 2. And Ugla waste that one away. Is that a fastball there? I think it's a knuckleball. Knuckleball? Hard one? Hard one up and in. The, the problem when you get in these situations for a knuckleball pitcher is that you want to throw the nasty one to get the strikeout. It puts a lot of pressure on Josh Tolley. But you know what? You got to. Yeah, no, you have to. Absolutely. You have to. Just block it with anything. Again, the 0 2, and he goes low and away. Ball and two strikes to Ugla. He can try that again, can he? He's got a one and two count. See if Ugla will fish. He's throwing that hardest of knuckleballs twice in a row now. Would he change speeds in this spot? I wouldn't change speeds here. You'd hate to hang one to Ugla here. Go with your best pitch, the hard knuckleball. You're right, Gary. He went with it. I just, I look at it this way. Would I be able to sleep that night? If I gave up a two run single on a 2 2 count or 1 2 count with a slow knuckle ball. Now it's 2 and 2 to Ugla. He got him. Big strikeout for R.A. Dickey as he strikes out Ugla for the second out. No, I know it's easy up here. You just got to put the ball in play here. But Ugla's just a free swinger. He always takes a big hack. That was just the start in the middle of the plate, acted like a, a knuckleball slider. So now who do you want to face, Hayward or Ross? Ross had a bullet his last time up. Hayward hitting three, 230, pitched to him. 0 for 2 tonight, took a call, third strike, grounded out to Turner, who made a nice play to get him. And that one pops out of Tolley's mid, ball one. Should say Hayward's hitting 221. My goodness. He's we'll definitely go after him. They were three for nine in his career against Dickey. Douglas now 0 for 18. 
And that knuckleball in for a strike, one and one. Last year when R.A. Dickey was in these circumstances, it seemed like he always got the big out. Less so this season. Big out here, though. On 1 1, Hayward takes a big rip. Ball and two strikes. Hayward swing is like a, look at that. It's like a shoulders ball or something. There's something different about his swing this year than last year. I just can't put my finger on it. It's more of a sweep. Rado and Freeman in scoring position with two out. Nicky has fanned two in the inning. Slow ground ball. Reyes slides over, uses that howitzer and gets him. Side retired. Nicky gets out of a second and third jam to keep it a one run game. Available in HD presented by IOTV, and you can listen to every Mets game on Sports Radio 66 WFAN. Night game tomorrow, day game Sunday with the Braves, then four with the Padres before the Mets go to Arizona and San Diego on their next road trip. Well, this is a huge inning for the Mets. When you look ahead in this game, the Braves have as locked down a seventh, eighth, and ninth inning as anybody in the game. So the Mets have the heart of the order up against Hudson in the sixth. And Murphy, who singled and scored the only Met run in the first, leads off. David Wright on deck, Angel Pagan behind him. Hudson's allowed just three hits. And he falls behind on Murphy, 2 0, one of the rare times Hudson's been behind tonight. Over the mound. In comes Utla. Quick toss. Got him. One away. Let's check in with the studio. Chris Carlin standing by with the New York State Smokers quit line game break. Here, one out and nobody on in the bottom of the sixth. And David Wright, who drove in the only med run with a long double off the fence and left center back in the first, steps in against Hudson. David grounded out in his second at bat in the fourth. And that one's hit to shortstop. Tough backhand stop for Gonzalez, and the flip throw oh, gets it. And dropped. Uh, dropped by Freeman at first base, and Wright is safe. Uh, it was quite a pickup by Gonzalez, and then this little flip. And he made a terrible throw over. He just made a nonchalant throw, and there you go. And Freddie had the four footwork there. He got to catch that. He was, got, he was worried. See, he was more concerned. He came off the back, so it was poor footwork. So it all originates right here. The very nonchalant flip over. And one, a one-run ball game. 
But how does Freeman not catch that ball? Because he was worried about the base behind he, him. He was late to the bat. Yep, could not find it. Yep. Well, it's an error on the first baseman. Assist to the shortstop. Error on the first baseman. And the Mets have the tying run aboard. Angel Pagano. Angel has struck out and walked 0 for 1. Right, a very short lead at first. And the ball in the dirt, but no place for Wright to go. David had nine steals before he got hurt. Has not attempted one since coming off the disabled list. So big spot here for Pagan has got the good career numbers against Hudson. Nine for 19. Jason Bay on deck. That's trying to take advantage of the Freeman error. Never understood nonchalant plays in August or September, and really any time of the season when it's a tight ball game and every game's important. Slash foul by Pagan, one and one. I think you're right, Keith. I think what happens for I've seen Al, that happened to Alex before, and I, I will tell you he is about as uh, short-handed as you're going to get. But I think it was a chance to make a flashy play, and that's just. Uh, it looks nice if you make it. If you don't make it, uh, you put your pitcher in peril. A little bit of that mustard on it. Yep. And a knee high strike to Pagan, and now Hudson gets himself ahead on the count. Fastball in. And he struck out Angel. He threw that fastball in, that slider down and in. Fastball in. It's a double up. He's going to throw this right at his hip if he can. Yeah, that's just this is I don't agree with this. He's an aggressive pitcher, is he not? Yep. One two from Hudson. Mm. That's just off the plate. Two and two. He made the pitch. Though he'd be missed in, he wasn't going to get hurt. Almost got a. Almost got it to come out over the plate and get the corner. Tim Hudson, 175 lifetime wins, only 94 losses. And a tight one tonight with a tying run at first. And Angel lines one to left, but right there is Constanza. And that's the second out. And so right back to first with two away. Pitch count for Hudson working in the sixth inning. And now Jason Bay. Jason's hit one ball hard that was caught. And a pop fly that fell for a double. Well, that's, that's where they say they even out. <laughs> Hitters never think they even out. I know that. But and what do pitchers think? Uh, pitchers don't think they even out <laughs> either. That means they even out. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Well, let's see if the Mets can take advantage of the fourth out given to them by the yeah. by the Braves. Right, still with a very short lead at first base, and David is not even thinking about stealing a base. It would appear, carrying the tying run in this spot. Bay is now in, in seven straight games with his double in the fourth inning. That's got unlucky on that play. Pagan was at first; the ball bounced out of play. Otherwise, Pagan might have scored. Hudson works him inside, a ball and a strike. Now a lot of young pitchers could learn from Tim Hudson in this situation. Looked like he was going to get two outs in the inning. Gonzalez and Freeman couldn't hook up. Do you see anything on his face? Nothing. No stomping around the mound. Just give me the ball. Let's go back to work. Now you see a lot of younger pitchers, and I don't even say major league pitchers, get so affected by something that happens on the field. Are you angry that it happened? Of course you are. But it's already washed away. Back into the game. That's why he's 175 and 94. Well, isn't there also an aspect of that where even if it does bother you, you, you have to find a way to hide it? Yeah, you can't show it because uh, there's going to be uh, uh, plenty of plays that Gonzalez is going to uh, keep Hudson in the game.
right the tying run at first with two out. And the breaking ball. This is to Bay and now it's three and one. Well, over the last dozen years only Roy Halliday's won more big league games than Tim Hudson. And don't forget he missed the season and a half but he's still on that list. Had his first big year in Oakland. Came up midseason in 99, won 11 and 2 that year. There's a curve for a strike. And he won 20 games in his first full year in the big leagues in 2000. Went 20 and 6 that year. He's off and run. Zito, Hudson, and Mulder. It's a pretty good trio. Wright gets set to run with 3 and 2 and 2 down. Freeman playing behind him. Bay off to Bay. And it's on the inside oh. corner. Got him looking at the slider. So Hudson worked it with the curve. Got him looking at the slider. And Hudson has his second strike out of the night. It gets out of the inning. By twisted tea, hard ice tea. Charlie Finley paid his players to grow mustaches, and they all did. And Raleigh Fingers did better than any of them. Yes, he did. What was it like, two hundred or two hundred fifty dollars for them to grow a mustache? Well, it worked. They got to the World Series that year, 1972. Pulled down a third by David Ross. Right bobbles, reaches for it a third time, and then throws it away. And Ross is safe at first. He might have taken a turn, so he scrambles back to the bag. Now David, after picking one off to the side against Ross his last time, this time got in front of the ball, played it off his chest, but just couldn't pick it up. And then to boot, airmailed one over Murphy's head for an air. Sunflower seeds. So Hudson got around an error by Freeman in the bottom of the six. Now Dickey's going to try to do the same after the leadoff error by Wright. For David, his eighth error of the year. Alex Gonzalez, one for two, singled and scored back in the third. And he takes a knuckleball for a strike. Remember, you got Hudson hitting eighth in the order. He's on deck. With a knuckleball pitcher almost. Takes away the hit and run, doesn't it? it certainly does. <laughs> I wouldn't want to hit and run on a knuckleball pitcher. And the one part of it is David Ross. Yeah, who's of course, yeah. Very slow.
Dickey about to throw his 90th pitch of the night. He threw only 82 in his last start in Washington. That's come out for a pinch hitter with the Mets behind. Pitching with an extra day of rest as well. Never like your brain to go there. But in this kind of game, you got to feel if you're already Dickey, I cannot allow another run. Not with that bullpen of Atlanta. And a check swing, and he stopped it in time. Three and one to Gonzalez. And of course, when we talk about the Braves bullpen, we talk about Eric O'Flaherty and Johnny Venters and the closer Craig Kimbrell, who have just been locked down all year. Now, the Mets got to Venters the last time they saw him in Atlanta in the middle of June. But you're not going to do that too often. Fastball for a strike three and two. It's Venters. But that trio has been so much a part of what the Braves have been able to accomplish so far this year. Three and two to Gonzalez with nobody out. Ross is running and it's grounded to short. Reyes might have a chance for two. Gets the out at second and Turner gets upended and still turns it over. Now Ross was running on the pitch, which gave him a good shot at Turner. Took him out, but Justin hung in. Very nicely done by Jose, realizing got a slow runner in Ross and going for the two. So very good by Jose. Nice turn by Turner, hung in there. Very clean slide. Nothing you can do about that. That's just baseball. You got to appreciate Turner at second base, don't you? A hard nosed player. Yes, he is. Understood exactly what was coming and made it happen. Right. Dickey is waiting for Wait. Lucas Duda to move in right field. That's right. Lucas Duda was uh, stuck uh, in a position where the hitters, where he played the hitters, now he had to come in. He was stuck in Alex Gonzalez mode. He needed to get into Tim Hudson mode. Although, how do you talk about it this year? Has a home run through his resume. Maybe he was stuck out in that strawberry patch out there. No, Carver used to get on straw all the time because <laughs> the grass was yellow. Yes. From being dead, he never moves off that spot. <laughs> He's playing too deep. <laughs> like a strawberry patch. <laughs> One, two, not a. Oh, that, you, that used to <laughs> rankle Daryl. Oh, oh, that rankled him. <laughs> He'd come in and go, that dog on the Carver. <laughs> <laughs> Dickey ahead one and two on Hudson and the slow one. He's got it down as low as 61 tonight. That one was 63. Ra born in 74 and Hudson in 75 maybe faced each other. Tennessee Auburn. And Dickey wins this portion of the SEC showdown. Hitting over, so both pitchers working around an error. Dickey getting the double play ball with help from Justin Turner hanging in on the David Ross hard slide. Two to one Atlanta.
Santana spoke to the media after being diagnosed with a fatigued shoulder and he'll be uh, kept from throwing for a few days. After that game that I pitch, uh, I feel I feel good. Then uh, the day after I pitch in that game, uh, I lunt off. And then uh, two days later, I throw bullpen, and and it was fine. But then, uh, as a as a doctor, doctors they say it was too much too soon. You know, instead of uh, lunt off, and the next day after the game, I was supposed to uh, uh, relax, not not throw. So, so, so to check how the arm recovers, and, and then uh, after a couple of days of not throwing, I feel fine. You know? So uh, it's something that you have to get in that routine and, and, and listen to your body, you know, and see how how it feels. Lucas Duda almost tying up the game, taking one back to the warning track in right center against Tim Hudson, and Jason Hayward able to make the catch. Just missed it. That ball not only did not carry, it came back into play almost. I thought it carried. I thought he, I just thought he got under it just slightly. Boy, oh boy, right by the Xerox sign. So one pitch for Hudson, one out in the seventh. Eric O'Flaherty starts to loosen. Josh Tolley, the batter, and he takes ball one. As far as Santana is concerned, I thought Sandy Alderson put it best today because there's been so much conversation about whether Santana will be able to pitch this year and whether that's good for him and whether that's good for the Mets. And what Sandy said was whether he pitches or not in September, there's no way that we'll be able, Sandy speaking here, will be able to make a, a more definitive judgment on what he's going to be going into next year, no matter what happens the rest of this year. And I thought that was interesting because you know, the Mets have got a plan for next year. Not knowing whether Santana is going to be available or not. Jim Burdak up in the Mets bullpen. Well, it, it's uh, you know I, I think this has been a, a, a interesting, more interesting thing because they've allowed Santana also to play a big part in uh, how he feels and how to proceed. You know, there's been some stops and starts, and some of them have been because of the doctors, but some have also been because of Johan and and. Letting his body tell him when it's time to, to do his thing. Willie Harris out on deck to bat for R.A. Dickey. His only chance to win this game is if the Mets can get him a couple of runs in the seventh. Tony slots one to short right at Alex Gonzalez. And Hudson has the second out. So two out and nobody on. Now Harris will bat for Dickey. Well, there are the numbers with Santana since he joined the Mets. A brilliant first season in 2008, including that memorable game he pitched the second to last day of the season with a bad knee. But then he's had issues to deal with since then. First the knee, and then the elbow, which shortened his 09 season, and then the shoulder, which shortened his 2010 season, has kept him from pitching at all in 2011. Here's Willie Harris with two out and nobody on, pinch hitting for Dickey. Mets have managed just three hits tonight against Tim Hudson. Harris trying to get aboard for Reyes. Really a former Brave. And Hudson falls behind a 2-0. Well, it's been kind of a typical Ari Dickey start this year, right? Pitching well enough, but not well enough to get a win. Somehow Dickey is only five and nine this year. Interesting. Hudson went two and zero. Oh, took some time. Regathered himself. Harris gets ahead of that one and lines it over the dugout. One to Harris and the breaking ball misses and now it's three and one. Ryota Igarashi up in the Mets bullpen along with Burdak. You got the left hand hitters Constanza and Bourne set to lead off for the Braves. And Harris takes a strike on the inside edge three and two. Pretty good when you can throw a little cutter on the inside corner a little slider a three and one with Reyes looming in the on deck circle. 
and you're just protecting a one run lead in the seventh. Pretty good pitch. Yeah, three waste, two. Just waste that slider away. 3 2 breaking ball. Sunday at 7 p.m. Darrell Rivas talks about the state of the Jets defense. Plus, Janae Coakley talks with Mike Tannenbaum about Plaxico and Holmes. Find out whose Super Bowl catch he thinks was the best on Jets Nation inside camp Sunday at 7 p.m. only on SNY. 3 2 to Harris, and he walked him, and the Mets have a two out base runner with Reyes coming up. The second walk given up by Hudson. Now let's see if Freddy Gonzalez is inclined to go to his left hander to turn Reyes around. Hudson at 93 pitches for the night. He's got a Flaherty warm in the bullpen. I think you stay with your big guy. Reyes has hit two balls well against Hudson tonight. Both catches made by Constanza in left. Rounded out his last time up. Harris the tying run at first with two out. Two to one seventh inning. And Reyes takes wide for ball one. Reyes with 47 extra base hits this year. That's in the top 10 in the league, and the Mets dearly need an extra base hit right now. Well, with Scott Linebrook on the uh, Linebrook on the disabled list, it's kind of the right side of that bullpen of the Braves is kind of a little short, but they got that big Craig Kimball out there, their saver, who throws bullets. Of course, Ventures gets everybody out <laughs> from the left side. Reyes lays off, and Hudson's behind 2 0. Reyes trying to be patient with Hudson, against whom he has two career home runs. Now on 2 and 0, Jose watches oh, high and away, and it's 3 and 0. Hudson all of a sudden losing a little command of the strike zone. He walked Harris. He's 3 and 0 on Reyes. Justin Turner on deck. Dickey hoping for a little lightning to support him. Reyes homered in his last game on Tuesday night. Takes a strike. Hudson's got that little fish he throws up there, a little sinking fish he throws around 88, 87, 86. Try to get the left hander to roll over on it. Three and one to Jose Reyes. And he pops it up. Gonzalez calling. Side retired. So Hudson gets Reyes and gets out of seventh inning trouble. Still two to one at left.
team. You and a guest could have dinner with us, then catch a game in the SNY suite at City Field on Thursday, September 1st. Plus, you'll be featured in a segment on Mets Weekly. All proceeds benefit the high school basketball team scheduled to play in the 2012 SNY Invitational. Just go to SNY.tv slash charity auction and bid today. Johnny Venter is getting ready for the Braves. Tim Burdak pitching for the Mets as we go to the eighth inning. Boy, this is a big relief outing for Burdak here. He's got to get these two speedsters, both Constanza and Bourne, back to back. Constanza has the biggest hit in this game. He came up with a runner at first and one out in the third with the Mets up one nothing. Dickey fell behind him two and oh threw him a fastball and Constanza drilled it to the gap in right center. Drove home Alex Gonzalez with his first major league triple and then scored the go ahead run on Michael Bourne's sacrifice fly. And it takes a big hack at Burdak's first pitch fastball nothing in one. So Constanza a guy who was a career minor leaguer until a week ago has had an enormous impact on this game tonight both with his bat his legs and his defense. Corners are in against him and he thinks about a bunt and takes a strike 0 and 2. So Ari Dickey went seven innings allowed two runs five hits no walks five strikeouts. Good enough to win most nights but not tonight. He's on the hook for a potential tenth loss against five wins and Constanza throws his bat on it to keep the at bat alive. And seven successful innings under his belt. And again, he pokes it the other way, right along the line of foul ball. Constanza just trying to put the ball in play and doing whatever it takes to get the bat on the ball. If I were Mr. Burdak, I would pop this yes. guy inside. No fool of Ball's three, four inches outside. He's still getting the bat on it. Throw one right at his belt buckle. Burdak last pitched Sunday in Washington. Got a key strike out of Lance Nix, the only batter he faced in that game. And the fastball too high, one and two. Michael Bourne, another guy who can fly, is on deck, and then Martin Prado for the Braves in the eighth as they look to stretch a one run lead. Mets got their run in the first. The Braves got their two in the third. And since then, it's been Hudson and Dickey. Now Burdak out of the bullpen for New York. Right back to Burdak. Deflects to Reyes. He'll have to hurry with the bare hand play, and he can't get it. An infield hit for Jose Constanza. Well, tough chance here. If he makes the play, it's an easy one to three. He does not. Tough play for Reyes. Nice bare hand, but too much speed. And Ronnie, you said it. He was set for a fastball in. Yeah. That ball was a foot outside. Boy, he can run. So let's see how the Braves play it here. You got Bourne at the plate. Constanza, who has not yet stolen a base in the majors, but had 286 stolen bases in nine minor league seasons. Bourne, who can get a bunt down. 0 for 2 and a sacrifice fly tonight. And he takes it off the plate for ball one. Michael Bourne, who began his career with the Phillies, traded to the Astros in the deal that sent Brad Lidge to Philadelphia. And now in his first week as a Brave. And the slider in for a strike, one on one. Our team Prado on deck, a right hand hitter behind him, another left hand bat in Freddie Freeman. Bunning on the first pitch it was a ball. Looks like Freddie took it off so he could swing, but Burdak with the strike as he can go back to bunt mode. And he gets jammed, gets the bunt down, 
And Bourne wasn't able to get out of the batter's box and totally throws him out. So it goes to sacrifice. As Burdak knocked down Bourne, but Bourne got the bunt down anyway. Well, there's the fastball inside. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much luck right there for uh, Michael Bourne. Two three on the sacrifice gets Constanza to second with one out. And now Terry Collins will presumably bring in a right hander to face Martin Prado. So Igarashi will come in to try and keep the runner at second base. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Lincoln. Two to one Atlanta in the eighth. We'll be right back. Sacrifice and now Ryote Garashi, who's been pitching so much better lately, comes in with a runner at second and one out. Pitching so much better and pitching in control. He's inherited 18 runners this year. He stranded 11 of those 18. Half a moon. Is that where he stranded him? Well, the question <laughs> is is the moon half full or half empty? Yes. For the Mets. We'll find out a lot in the way these last two innings play out. That's right. Martin Prado one for three tonight and an infield hit his last time up. Constanza at second and one out. It's a very interesting situation. It all falls on the Mets having only one left hander in the bullpen. You've got Freeman in the on deck circle, Gare. Ron and I were discussing it in break. Uh, you have no other left hander out there. Uh, if you get Prado out, do you walk Freeman intentionally with an open base and pitch? To a red hot Ugla? Mm, that's a tough call. Mm, sure is. So let me ask you this Would you have thought about walking Prado and leaving Burdak to face Freeman? I don't know if I would have even uh, uh, walked Prado because I think that uh, Burdak is a veteran enough that he might be able to uh, get, get him out with some balls around the periphery of the strike zone. Give him a shot, anyways. Prado takes a fastball for a strike. Actually, that was a split. Yes, it was. Didn't do much. It doesn't have to, though. If you are behind in the count and you have the ability to throw that for a strike, hitter's going to take it. Well, 
early in the season that splitter was just moving way too much for Igarashi and he couldn't throw it for a strike. Past the mound, Reyes to his left, turns and fires on a hop, not in time. Second infield hit of the inning for the Braves, first and third and one out. Prado just found the good spot for it, and Reyes couldn't get it there in time. Just a tough throw for Jose, and some mustard on it. All of his momentum going towards right field, and just just enough speed for Prado to beat it out. Saves a run by keeping it in the infield. So now Constanza is at third. Prado at first with one out, and the Mets badly need a double play ball. With Freddie Freeman, who's doubled twice in this game, once over the head of Pagan in center field, the other one sliced down the left field line. And Freeman, a guy that goes the other way, that waits. That it might be play. This stuff might be playing right into his hand, his foot finger. Starts him off with a fastball inside. He is locked in. That ball was six inches off the plate, and he did, looked at it like it was a fly. Just annoying. And Freeman yanks that splitter foul, and it's one and one. Well, Garashi in a tough spot here. Burdak was greeted by Constanza's infield hit off Burdak's glove. And now Prado an infield hit. And the Braves primed to try and add to their 2 to 1 lead. Take the third base. Well, the Mets are playing back all the way for two. David Wright deep. The only guy that's going to have a play on the infield is the pitcher and Murph at first. But if Murph gets a hard ground ball, you turn the two. Only calls for the fastball. Freeman Ooh. fouls it off. Well, Freeman's had two pitches to hit, and he's had two good swings, but he's fouled them back. This was right where he wants it. They want it in. It bleeds out. Never even got to the outside to the inside corner. You got to take a chance for Igarashi bouncing one of those split fingers. Freeman has 101 strikeouts, so he can be struck out. Go to the curveball. Little high. Two and two. Raymond with his two hits tonight now has a 19 game hitting streak. And he's up over 300 for the year. That's it. That right there is impressive. Splitter in the dirt, not even full, no check swing, not even a check swing. That's right. Perfect balance. And now they can send Prado, and that'll give them a chance to stay out of the double play. So that's a big pitch. That's already turned a double play with the runner going. They did that in the last inning. They want fastball in. That's called from home plate. You that's know, called by that's called from the bench from the bench. Yes. Excuse me, and Igarashi does not want to throw it. They're telling him he doesn't want to throw it. He wants to go to a splitter. Three and two to Freddie Freeman. Prado runs. Freeman hits it hard. Wright's going to come home with it. Now can stands in the rundown. Igarashi. Wright makes the tag, and the runners get to second and third. Wright did not want to give that ball up to Igarashi, and that enables the runners to get as far as they can. 
Well, the Mets very fortunate here and very good presence of mind for David. 3 2, runner running, knows he can't turn two, with the runner in motion, goes home. Very nice. And a nice run down, even though the runner's advanced. See, Josh shouldn't have gone out of the way. Josh should have stayed there and right run to get it right back to him and tag him out. And then the runners can't advance. 5 2 5 on the fielder's choice. So now two in scoring position. Ugla the batter. You got a right hander on the mound. You got a left hand hitter, Jason Hayward, on deck. But it looks like the Mets are going to pitch to Ugla in this spot. Ugla with a 25 game hitting streak on the line is 0 for 3 tonight. All that against Dickey. And first pitch swinging over the top of a splitter. Nothing at one. A good pitch there from Igarashi out of the strike zone. Use first base that's open as your friend. Make sure the ball is down out of the strike zone. Ugla's going to swing. He's an aggressive hitter. He's had three career at bats against Igarashi. 0 for 3. And now Igarashi wants to talk to Tolan. They're having a hard time uh, uh, back and forth. We've seen Tolly a couple times call for a pitch, whether it was the fastball in, and then double up on it, which is, tells the pitcher he really wants that pitch, or as Keith said, probably the bench wants that pitch. But Igarashi, you have to go with what you feel confident with, and his split finger is the pitch that has gotten him out of trouble the last couple of weeks. At the end of the day, it's got to be the pitcher's there call. There you go. Two in scoring position and two out, oh. and that curveball didn't break. It's one and one to Ugla. Just got underneath this one, right at the head of Ugla. Ugla. That's two now. You think? <laughs> <laughs> he sure did get underneath that one. Cool. <laughs> Line drive left field base hit for Ugla. Prado scores. Freeman heading home. Day's throw to the plate is cut off. Dan Ugla drives home two, extends his hitting streak to 26 games, and the Braves get two crucial runs and go up four to one. First base open, the hottest hitter on the planet at the plate. The Mets go after him and pay. And he keeps that hitting streak alive, and that is a clutch two out RBI right there. You say to yourself, is that a good choice with the split finger? It's not a bad choice. He just kept it up in the strike zone. The key is, is that if you're going to continue to throw split fingers to a veteran hitter like Ugly, you're going to have to mix in a fastball every now and then to change the speed. Well, these are all Igarashi's runs here. Jason Hayward is 0 for 3 tonight. Strike out of two ground balls. Well, the Mets' task against the Atlanta bullpen was going to be hard enough down by a run. Hell? Now, triply hard. 2 0 oh now to Hayward. One run in the inning charge to Burdak, the other charge to Igarashi. The table set with two infield hits, but it's Ugla with his red hot bat who drives in both. And now Igarashi clearly unsettled behind on Hayward 3 and 0. Well, as Constanza left his mark all over this game. There's ball four and Hayward's on with the walk. So the inning continues and David Ross will come up with two men on. Ross is 0 for 3 tonight. Reached on David David Wright's error to start the seventh inning. DJ Carrasco quickly to work in the Mets bullpen. As 
as Igarashi tries to secure the final out of the inning. Ross bats with two out and two on. And he takes a fastball for a strike. This inning all started with two infield hits. Two infield hits around a bunt that Warren was trying to get out of the way of. That's right. It knocked the bat out of his hands and he dropped it in there for it. Couldn't have a more perfect bunt. I mean, he could just as well have popped, popped that up. Yep. But that's not the way this night has gone. Igarashi trying to put away Ross. Ahead 0 and 2. And he misses high with the fastball. Runs belongs to Tim Hudson, who's technically still in the game. And what was that number on Hudson when the his team scores with four runs when he's in the game? Four runs when he's in the game, I believe it's 140 and two or something like that. Crazy number. He doesn't lose too often. No. That'll be 140 and two. With a lead of three or more runs. Splitter misses low ball three. So after getting ahead on Ross 0 and 2, Igarashi's gone to a full count. And Terry Collins is just livid at what he's watching. It's almost as though Igarashi before our eyes has reverted to the pitcher that he was three months ago. It's like he's found success with all of his pitches, got a splitter back and his curve, and now he's become a nibbler. And it doesn't help that he and Tolley don't seem to be able to communicate yeah. very well. But Tolley's not calling this game. He's always looking into the, in the dugout for the pitches. So now the runners get set to go. Ugly at second, Hayward at first. Three and two to Ross. And he walked him, and the bases are loaded. So back to back walks by Igarashi after giving up the big hit to Uglo. Dan Worthen's going to come out for a conversation, but that means it appears that Igarashi's staying in the game. And now he'll face Alex Gonzalez with the bases loaded. The inning began with Tim Burdak on the mound. Jose Constanza, who's been in the big leagues for a week and has had an enormous impact on this game, he had a comebacker that was deflected by Burdak. Too slow for Reyes to try and throw out the speedy Constanza. Warren, fortunately, getting out of the way of a pitch, dropped down a sacrifice bunt. Igarashi came in. Prado hit one that just going to squirrel past the mound, and Reyes. Got there but couldn't throw out Prado. That put runners at first and third. Freeman hit a hard ground ball at right. They tagged out Constanza in the rundown. But then with first base open, Ugla, who had been held in check tonight by Dickey, singled the drive in two. Now Igarashi has walked the next two. And here's Gonzalez, first pitch swinging at the splitter, and it's nothing at one. And ball one right there. It's almost as if after Ugla's hit, Ronnie, it took. All the air out of the sails of Igarashi, and you don't like to see that. In a no, picture. of course you got you got to still ply away. He's already thrown 24 pitches, 
Hutchinson's coming in with one out in the inning. A ball and a strike to Gonzalez is one for three tonight. Singled and scored the first Atlanta run back in the third. Gary Costanza again. The one thing he got in that rundown long enough to get the runners in scoring position for Ugly single. And he's overthrowing yeah. his fastball. Eric Kinski has come out on deck to bat for Tim Hudson. If Gonzalez keeps the inning going, Kinski is celebrating his birthday today, 34 years old. Big left hand slugger. Here's the 2 1, and the curveball for a strike. 2 and 2. Well, for a pitcher who made his mark in Japan as a smaller athlete who can throw extremely hard, the transition here to the States for Igarashi, he's not learned that. The speed of the baseball is less important than the location of the fastball. Now it's two and two to Gonzalez. And he stays in there. Base is loaded two out the two two and it's foul back. And so Igarashi will throw a 30th pitch in this inning. An inning that has snowballed downhill for Igarashi since he came on with a runner at first and one out. Two runs have scored and the bases are loaded behind him. Gonzalez lifts one to shallow right. Lucas Duda there, and that retires the side. Nicaragua gets through the inning, but not before Dan Ugly extends his hitting streak and in the process drives on two huge insurance runs, and the Braves lead four to one in the middle of the eighth. Common Ground Alliance. Know what's below. Call 811 before you dig. Pepsi Max, Field of Dreams. You can play ball with ML great, MLB greats. Visit MLB.com slash Pepsi Max to learn more. And State Farm. Today's State Farm agent of the day is John Garfinkel of Brooklyn, New York. Contact John's office at JohnGarfinkel.com. Nicely done. 
That was brilliantly handled. A couple little now you can tell us about Johnny Bennett. What, what is there to tell? Uh, look at the ERA, 1.26. Look at the strikeouts, innings pitch. Look at the walks. This guy's having one of the more historic, great bullpen years for a left-hander, for any left-hander, right-hander. Justin Turner leads off in the bottom of the eighth. Mets now down by three. Turner, Murphy, and Wright up against Venters. Tim Hudson went seven, allowed just one run and three hits. And a little tapper. Venters with the easy play. One quick out. Your Cholula flamethrowers. Those are the numbers since July 1st on these three incredible Atlanta relievers. Just off the charts. No earned <laughs> runs for any of the three of them. Oh, get your team a lead. Well, that's why we talked about in the sixth inning when the Mets had the heart of the batting order up against Hudson and got the break with the error made on the infield that that was their chance. But they weren't able to take advantage of that chance. Now they find themselves three runs in arrears and facing this bullpen. A ball and a strike to Murphy who's one for three tonight. DJ Carrasco up in the Mets bullpen getting ready to pitch in the top of the ninth. And Murphy takes just below the knees, 96 miles an hour, two and one. David right on deck. You know, there were a host of wonderful rookies in the National League last year. With Buster Posey and Jason Hayward right at the top of the list. But nobody. Nobody did his job as a rookie last year better than Johnny yes. Benton's. And he is proving this year that it was no fluke. He had a phenomenal year last year. Ball four, and so Murphy's on with a one out walk. Well, the last time the Mets faced Venters back in June, that was the game that the Mets. Rallied against Venters and then let a big lead get away late. To push Conway to the home run against K. Rod and then Carrasco committed the block that ended it. But the Mets got to Venters in that game. So at least they have that memory to work with here in the eighth. Wright is one for three tonight, doubled in a run back in the first inning. Pedro Beato now up in the Mets bullpen. Ball one to right. Let's check in with Kevin. Talking with David about that time off, and obviously he didn't want to be sitting out for two months, Gary. But you know, he said it, it did teach him a little bit of patience and helped him develop, you know, more on the mental side of the game. And I asked him how. He said, "Well, you know, I just really watched from a different perspective. Instead of watching in the everyday grind, I I watched how pitchers pitch to our guys. I watched how different pitchers pitched around the league. Watched a bunch of different games, and I think it was a different type of preparation without you playing. So I tried to make it useful." All that time I was out, guys. Mm. Just off the plate, and it's two and one to David. Well, there's no question that David has come back refreshed. He's come back with a little different stance at the plate, a little better ability to reach pitches on the outer part of the plate, and he's looked awful good. So he did make use, good use of that time. Finds himself in a positive count against Venters. Who just walked Murphy. Now it's three and one to David. Up the middle, base hit. Murphy pulls in at second, and the Mets will get the tying run to the plate here in the bottom of the eighth. Well, nice at bat again by Dave. So David Wright with his second hit of the night, just the Mets fourth, and now Pagan will come to bat. Angel is 0 for 2 in a walk tonight. Lined out to left field his last time. Huh? That's Carlos Tosca. Bench coach for the Braves. He came with Freddie from uh, the Marlins. Also managed in the big leagues for the Toronto Blue Jays. One of the few that never played the game. Never played professionally. Angel Pagan has more at bats than any Met against Venters, but he's gone 0 for 8 against him. First pitch swinging and he hits one shallow to right field. And Hayward has it. Two out. So 
So now two out and two on and a chance for Jason Bay. Tying run at the plate in a four to one game. Jason with a pop fly double in the fourth. One for three. Jason it's a weak ground ball to second base. Ugla takes care of it. Pagan and Bay both go out on one pitch. And the Mets strand two in the bottom of the eighth. On to the ninth, four to one Atlanta. Jonathan Neese pitches against Tommy Hansen. Coverage begins at 6.30 tomorrow night. Right here on SNY. DJ Carrasco will pitch the top of the ninth inning for New York. See Carrasco's numbers on the season. Pretty even across the board. Right handers and left handers. Close to a 300 average from the left side too. Eric Hinsky will bat for Johnny Venters leading off in the ninth. Hinsky celebrating his 34th birthday today. And he's got tremendous career numbers against DJ Carrasco. Six career at bats, three hits, two home runs. Ooh. Last time we saw Carrasco against the Braves, as Hinsky fouls it off his foot, and Kimbrell is up in the bullpen. Carrasco committed a balk that ended the game in Atlanta. That was the last game between the Mets and the Braves. Mets won the first two of that series, and the balk kept them from. Sweeping. You know, Hinsky to me is a nice piece on your team. A guy coming off the bench, good bat, good pinch hitter, good teammate. And a good luck charm. Strike yes. three called. Carrasco gets him looking for the first down. Here's your Dunkin' Donuts around the majors for it tonight. Yankees have gone in front of the Red Sox despite a David Ortiz home run, 3 2 in the seventh now. The uh, Cardinals have gone in front of the Marlins, 3 2. That game is now in the bottom of the eighth. Lance Berkman with the go ahead hit. And the Brewers with a three game lead in the Central lead Houston, 3 1, uh, 6 1 now. That game is in the fifth inning. Everybody beating up on the Astros, especially when you got two of your best players, one here in Atlanta. And one Philadelphia. They were beating Hunter, up on him when they had him. Yeah. Hunter Pence at his first home run as a Philly last night. In their uh, shutout of the Giants. Cliff Lee going the distance in that game. He's had a strange year. I mean, he leads 
baseball with five shutouts, but he's also been tattooed a few times this season. Well, the Phillies have now won seven straight going into their game tonight in San Francisco. And they'll advance Worley, who's been a godsend for them in the absence of Oswalt and Blanton. And a young pitcher. Turner throws out Constanza, and that's the second out. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, the Mets have the bottom third of the order due up. Duda totally in the pitcher's spot with Craig Kimbrell on the horizon. Here's Bourne, who's 0 for 2 tonight, but a sacrifice fly drove in the go ahead run in the third, and a sacrifice bunt was in the middle of the two run eighth inning for Atlanta. Well, we talked about it at the outset of the broadcast tonight that the Braves have changed since the last time the Mets saw them with McCann out of the lineup. Chipper Jones out of the lineup and the addition of Bourne and Constanza who turns out to be the more important piece tonight. And they have used that speed to great effect both offensively and defensively tonight. And it's one of the prime reasons they lead this game. I mean, you take Constanza out of the mix and put say Eric Hinsky in left field. Reyes has two triples That's tonight. Right. It's a whole brand new ball game. And you've got a brave pitching staff that is one of the best in baseball and you want your speed and defense yes. out there. To the right side Turner to the hole to get it. And throws out the speedy Bourne to end the inning. So Carrasco throws a one two three top of the ninth. That's with their final chance coming up down four to one. Tonight, keep it tuned for Lincoln Post Game Live. Chris Carlin and Bobby Ojeda will have all the highlights, all the analysis, and reaction from the Mets clubhouse. Terry Collins post game press conference, all that Lincoln Post Game Live right after the game. Right after kick, Craig Kimbrell gets done with his work. He has faced 214 batters this season. He has struck out 86 of them. That's 40 percent. And his last 22 appearances have been scoreless. Lucas Duda leads off in the last of the ninth. Scott Harrison getting ready to grab a bat. It's Duda, Tolley, and then the pitcher spot. Duda 0 for 2 tonight. And he takes it wide for ball one. Kimbrell trying to save it for Tim Hudson, who went seven tonight. A lot of run on three hits. And after the Mets beat Hudson up a little bit in a couple of games earlier this year, he was spot on tonight. After giving up a run in the first inning. Hudson got out of a bases loaded jam with two out in the fourth worked around an error in the sixth and was pretty much home free after that. 
Mets have had just four hits tonight. Dude, it takes a rip and it's two and one. And Kimbrell had himself a very successful maiden voyage in his first All Star game. All three of those Atlanta relievers, I think, pitched in the same inning. Two and two to Duda. Trying to look for an Achilles heel here in Kimball's numbers. Uh, I have not found one. <laughs> well, he was tremendous when he came up late last season as the apprentice to Billy Wagner and then inherited the closing job. And with terrific backup from Venters and O'Flaherty, Kimbrell has been tremendous this year for a, an Atlanta team that has relied on their pitching and has relied on winning close games. And they have done a lot of that. And that's why they are in the wild card lead in the National League. 2 2 to Duda. He just got a piece of that. Well, the Mets, if they do not rally here in the bottom of the ninth, will fall below 500 for the year. Do their fifth straight loss, and they would be nine games behind Atlanta in the wild card and running out of hope. And they continue to play poorly at home, under 500 at home, Gare. Duda pops one up. Should be for Prado. And there's one out. Hard to figure, isn't it, that home and away, Keith? You know, this team, although it struggled the last couple of seasons, also uh, played markedly better here at City Field than they did on the road. And last, that's just last year, they certainly did. Yes, it just flipped upside down this year. And it's, you know, it's mostly the same group. Josh Tolley is 0 for 3. And he takes ball one. I, I think those things are happenstance. I, I agree, but I will tell you one thing, Gary. You get on the wrong end of it. For most of the season, then you start to hear it. Yep. You know? Agreed. So it's not a thing until it becomes a thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, the, the, the fans that come to the game and religiously come to the game, they factor that they haven't seen a win in a long time when they come to the games, and that's upsetting. And when you should be. When you play in New York, you're going to read about it too. <laughs> yeah. Well, there have been seven different years in Mets history when they finished the season with a higher winning percentage on the road than at home, most recently in 2007. So it does happen. But it's just that they were playing so well, particularly on that last road trip until the, the last couple of games. Yeah. Well, there you see the numbers. They've scored more runs. On the road, but they've also given up more runs on the road as you would expect yeah. getting away from the pitcher's ballpark. It's all about the record of being the six games under 500 at home. You got to make hay at home. Well, the Mets are in the stretch of a, a long string of home games, but you know, they're 0 and 2 on this home stand. About to fall to 0 and 3 unless they have a big rally. They're in the midst of a 10 game home stand now. They go away for six, they come back for a, a lot more home games in the month of August. I think it's 21 out of 29. That's right. 2 2 from Kimbrell and Tolley shoots one toward the hole. Gonzalez on the backhand and the toss is on target. Two down. Well, he didn't flip that one, did he? So the Mets are down to their final out. Nice backhand hand. He plants and over the top. Oh, a little sidearm, but he didn't flip it. Scott Harrison will be the pinch hitter. Trying to keep the Mets hopes alive. Harrison has been a huge bright spot of late. And the two home runs off the bench in Washington in the game on Sunday. Including the game tying shot with two out in the ninth. And he takes a strike. It's only a bat on this homestand. He was hit by a pitch. Mm. That was as a pinch hitter. Then he started the game on Tuesday night and had a couple of hits. 
But now Scott finds himself in a two strike hole with two out of the ninth. Kimbrell trying to put on the finishing touches. And the slider misses one and two. Reyes has had a rough night, 0 for 4. Hoping for another chance. Mm. Hairston down swinging, and the ball game is over. Kimbrell picks up the save for Tim Hudson as the Mets manage just four hits, and they are pushed below 500 and nine games behind Atlanta in the National League Wild Card. Well, Tim Hudson wins its 176th. R.A. Dickey drops to five and ten. Rookie gets another save. Dickey pitched uh, wonderfully. A Burdock and Igarashi couldn't manage to get through the eighth without giving up a couple of runs. And in their five game losing streak, Mets have not scored more than three runs in any game. And the two additions to the Atlanta Braves, Costanza and Bourne, were big parts of the Brave victory. Costanza with his first career triple right in the middle of everything. Couple of big catches as well. Braves win it four to one. As you look at the Kia game summary, more coming up from City Field in just a moment.